Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In, Volume 1, Part 48. This morning, uh, I had to deal with not a crackhead this time. This is a young white chick. She says she was 23 years old. She's a heroin addict. She was walking down Corinth, just crying with her backpack and another little a uh, uh, tote bag with a personal effects in and I'm standing out there smoking a cigarette and she came over and she had cigarettes but she didn't have a light and before I could even reach for my lighter first thing she said are you judging me I say no I don't like judgmental people uh, she said uh, I shoot heroin. Is that a problem with you? I say, no, you live your life the way you see fit. I say, I don't have no problem with whatever drug you use. Your drug of choice, you want to be self-medicated, that's cool with me. But see, you judgmental. You judgmental. Man, this went on forever and ever. She wanted to use the phone. Her phone need charging. She had her iPhone. Somebody then brought her ass over in the hood and dropped off. That's what she was saying. They just brought me over here and left me. And she's young and pretty. Uh, I let her use the phone. And, and she said she had a family, but they won't allow her to live with her because of her drug addiction. So she called her brother. And her brother got in touch with her mom. They text me back and say, told her, say, call back immediately. So I handed her the phone. She called him. She stayed here until they came and picked her up. And these people in a nice, expensive car. And I talked to her mother. Her mother said, I sure appreciate you helping. I said, man, she was just walking down the street crying, man. I said, she ain't got no fucking business over in this neighborhood. This is the wrong fucking place to be hanging out. And uh, she said, well, we try." I told her, I said, you can work with this girl. She only 23. It's a chance for her. I said, she's not one of them old fools who you can't tell nothing. I said, she, you just work with her. But we done tried. We done tried to send her to rehab. She won't go. And her mother's real nice. I'm looking at her mother got a, a female Rolex on. Uh, she, she ain't hurting for no fucking money. And the lady hugged me and she got in the, in the back seat and they drove off. That was my interaction with the local dope fiend. She's not local over here because in this hood, uh, you don't come over here freestyling. That that's not happening. No freestylers walking around here. If either either they selling something or they buying something. You don't hang out here. Anyway, yeah, in the thumbnail it's gonna be uh my little buddy, his name is uh, Ron Brown, who old Lord shot in the head. He's gonna be the guy that's in the back of the truck you're gonna see. You'll see him standing over him. He's already dead. And before we get started, you know what it is. I got my right and I got my left. You make the choice. Either one cuts deep. Let's ride, y'all. I'm going to deal with this, this latest case. It's a real fucked up case. A deranged Texas woman who stabbed and decapitated her five-year-old daughter because the child asked for cereal would spend the rest of her life in prison after a jury found her guilty of capital murder on Thursday. Crystal Villanueva, who also knifed her father-in-law in the gruesome 2017 assault, claimed during her two-week trial that she'd been under the delusional belief that the two victims had become replaced by clones and had to be killed to bring back her real family members, authorities said. She was sentenced to life without parole, plus the 20 years for stabbing her father-in-law. Rest easy, Giovanna, little baby girl, rest easy, man. That's a damn shame. You got to go like that. Damn. And uh, Friday, 
is a capital murder committed here in Dallas at a 7-Eleven by a young Hispanic male. Uh, he stole money, cigars, and lottery tickets. He shot the owner in the head. And some customers came in the store and found the owner dead. But his downfall would be even if he got a win on those lottery tickets. The old lottery tickets are coded. They'll tell what store you went to and per, uh, purchased a lot, lottery ticket and where you turn it in to get money. So you damn if you do and damn if you don't. If you get someone else to turn that lottery ticket in, they're going to arrest their ass, then they're going to tell it on your ass because they're not going to take that capital murder case for your stupid ass. And 7-Eleven don't keep that much money in the cash register. And you're too dumb to know that that owner could open the safe. That sign they have up... We don't open the safe till the armor truck show up. That's bullshit. All you got to do is go in there and win $400 on the lottery and watch them go to the safe and get your $400 out. So you, you don't know shit about the robbery game. You really done fuck yourself off. You better hope you nobody sees your pitch and turn you in for that $5,000 reward. But you a shit creep, dude. If they bust you, your life is over. Uh. And my old Lord, uh, said in his Ramsey unit, uh, I forgot, I don't know what fucking work thing. We was in the potato field that day. We digging fucking uh, Irish potatoes. That's hard fucking work. Them fucking sacks weigh about 175 fucking pounds. And you got to pick these fucking sacks up and run with them. They have a trailer with a tractor with about five trailers on it going down the middle of the field. We fill the sacks up, take them over to a, three or four guys. They sew the sacks up. You got to pick that sack up, run, put it on that trailer, run, and get another sack. You're going to do this shit all fucking day long. So this particular day, one of the homosexual squads, they didn't have enough guards to carry this squad out. When they don't have enough guards, they do what they call a wrap-in. It'll take maybe three Put them in one hole, take four, put them in two hole, and on down the line like that. They'll wrap you in. So they put this flaming homosexual in one hole with us. When we got off the fucking trailers, and uh, I'm going to be a sack sewer because I was a striker. I sold a sack. So I'm going to have a really easy fucking day. Oh, Lord, wasn't paying attention. He looked and see this motherfucker got it all this fucking... Rouge and shit on his face and eyebrows arched. Oh Lord, look at that son of a bitch. He said, Who you be? He said, I be Brenda, oh Lord. He said, Brenda? Man, you the ugliest motherfucking woman I ever seen. What the fuck they put you in one hole for? I can't use you in here. I need working men. You ain't no goddamn working man. You's a working woman. He said, you so goddamn ugly, you look like a ring of tang with lipstick on. Start calling for the major. Major, come get this son of a bitch before I shoot him. Come get his goddamn ass out of one hole. Red Rider rolled up and said, hell, he know how to work. He a lead role over his squad. He said, I don't give a goddamn. He going to be leading the role right in the hell if he don't get, you don't get this motherfucker out of here because I swear I'm going to kill him. And uh, Red Rider took him and changed him out with somebody else. Red Rider can't get ready for no motherfucker looking like a woman or trying to act like a woman. All day long, I can hear him talking to his horse. I don't know what this damn Ramsey plantation coming to. Men looking like women, women looking like men. Boy, he's a regular fucking nut. He talks to his damn horse all the damn time. Yeah, something else concerning uh, Wildcat. When the Ruiz lawsuit started going on, if you read it real good, it got footnotes in there about Wildcat. So they took his warden position in 79 and made him the, the manager of Southern Agriculture. That's the position they gave him. They took the warden job from him because his name was in that lawsuit so much for all that fucking brutality. Now, if we could have... Uh, I got to admit, that system was brutal, but the system they got in place now ain't worth the fucking shit. At least back in the day, we had fucking privileges. If we could take <coughs> the 
the modern prison as it is now, with the privileges we had then, you'd have a good system. If we had, it's, these guys ain't never heard, no other state have lied in makes to go on furlough. I've been on two myself with a live sentence. They allowed you to go on furlough. For, at first, it was five days. Your family has to pick you up from the unit and bring you back. Then they increase it to seven days. You get to stay out of prison. If you don't have a ride, uh, they would allow, your, if a, say if a guy was going on furlough from Dallas, and my mother agreed, he can ride with me and my mother to Dallas. I done had guys ride with me and my mother. she take them home and take me and her go do our thing, go eat and hang out. And when, when they seven days is up, she go by their house and pick them up. She drive us back to prison. A modern prison, they ain't never heard of no shit like that. Those motherfuckers allowed you to go on furlough. You actually could leave a fucking prison. You know, they, you know all the fucking violence, that, that's how they controlled everybody. So it took me a while to understand what was really going on. They controlled it by fear. See, they love it when a guy is saying he's sexually assaulted. That keep the rest of the guys in line. You see a guy working the laundry, he live on a dorm where his laundry workers is laid back. He don't want to get moved over to a cell block where the field hands at. That's where all the shit is at. So he don't mind like a motherfucker. He do not want a job change. I done seen some of them guys, man, get a job change. They have tears in the eye. They know it's back to hell again. So it was controlled by fear. Even though we might have a lull in the violence, sometimes it go two weeks without a violent incident. Your subconscious mind always going to be there. This shit can change at any fucking minute. So you don't get too fucking relaxed. Every time you get relaxed, bad shit was going to happen to you. You had to stay on the top of your game. And as far as God, one of my last videos, I was talking about prostitution here in Dallas. No matter how you cut it and dice it, you're going to spend money dealing with a female. Unless she one of these brainless clowns walking around here. But most women... And got a lot of women got game. You know, they'll take you out. You whining and dining. Ain't nothing happening after this old weird. That's they come up right there. And she go brag with her friends about what a restaurant she ate. Oh, I wasn't feeding him like that. Or oh, you ask her about the sex. Oh, I don't know you. I got to get to know you a little bit better. You know from day one exactly what the hell you're going to do. You ain't got to get to know no one. When you go buy a car, you test drive that fucking car. You don't just go purchase a car at a car lot and drive off. You won't check check engine lights and all that. Same apply to a humor. I don't know what old chicks are telling these young chicks about they got to sell sex in order to get money. Like every guy is a trick. A lot of times that's backfiring on them. They end up being the trick. Trick or treat. If you got game, only way game will work on you is you go. You looking for something for nothing. And that's what you're going to receive. Look at how many of them are stuck with a kid. No dad, nowhere in sight. She, 18 years old. He on to the next one. He ain't giving a shit about you. He on to the next one. I was looking at a lady at Walmart. She walking with a little baby with her friends. They ain't got babies, but she got one. She looks so fucking pitiful. She looked pitiful. She know her life is over with. If she lied to be, you know, she probably going to be on government uh, subsidy the rest of her damn life. The baby was born on a food stamp call. You already got a food stamp call. They ain't even started living good yet. Yeah, that, that's a damn shame. But you're not a trick unless you, you spend your money and you ain't get what you paid for. Then you're a trick. A husband... He got to provide for the wife. Let him stop making that mortgage payment and produce it in the household and see how well, how long that marriage is going to work. His ass is going to be out of there. So it's money involved regardless. You can say uh, a lady is tricking. Well, sometimes it's better to just pay up front and get it over with. You ain't got to put up with all the bullshit. She going to listen to whatever you want to talk about because she want her damn money. And she know if she's good enough, she might get a bonus. Or she'll get a call back. Just remember, you are what you eat, meaning knowledge. If nothing goes in, 
nothing comes out. And it's two ways to get smart in this world. Socialize with somebody way smarter than you and to read like a motherfucker. Two ways. Y'all have a good day. Like and subscribe. Be ready to ride at a moment's notice. Because the shit might jump off. We got a long day in the front of us. Uh, I'm going to do a little riding around today. Ain't going to do no shopping. Just ride. It's riding look. Y'all keep your motherfucking shank sharp and ready at a moment's notice. Let's ride, y'all. Thank you for watching.